throughout your lives, you will see many amazing talks. And the reality is that you're not going to remember any of them. All you'll take away from them are these little nuggets of wisdom that resonate with you in some kind of way. And so when I was thinking about what is it that I want you guys to come away with from this, it was this. Like they say on a plane, in the case of an emergency, put on your oxygen mask before helping others. And this couldn't be truer in the case of leadership. So before I went on the Marketing Academy, this is the way that I looked at leadership. I thought it was about setting this grand vision and then sort of hurtling towards it and inspiring others to follow along with you. But after the Academy, this is how I looked at it instead. I saw it more as we're all trying to kind of rise as high as possible in life. And the best way to do that is to help other people build their own platforms so you all rise together. In order to do that then, it means that you need to make sure that your core, your foundations are as strong as possible. And when I went on the Marketing Academy, mine were far from it. So one of the first things that we had to do was write this letter to ourselves and seal it and not open it for nine months. And this is my actual letter that I wrote to myself. Just picking out some of the key bits. The next nine months for me is all about feeling confident in myself who I am, who I'm not, what I want to be, what I don't, what I like and what I don't. The way to achieve all this is about clarity. I need to have a much clearer idea about myself and the life I want to lead. I want to make people happy, inspire, comfort, guide, make people laugh. It's hard to do that when I'm not yet happy in myself. The next nine months is about maturing, growing into the kind of person I'd be proud of, the kind of boyfriend a partner would be proud of, the kind of father that his kids would be proud of, I need to let go, stop worrying, stop caring what others think, stop being ashamed of what I've not achieved, start leaving. I want to be proud, I want to be wise. And the reason I wasn't in a good place at this point was because a year earlier, I was living with an amazing girlfriend at the time. We'd been together four years and we were planning on getting married and all that kind of stuff. And one day uh, I was laying in bed and she didn't come home. And it got until about four in the morning. Eventually she came back and she was acting a bit strange. And uh, she received this text and she didn't respond to it. I thought that was kind of weird. And she said, oh, it's just her friends checking that she got back okay. So the next morning I did something that I'd never contemplated before, which is when she went to the shower, I picked up her phone and I just wanted to see that text seeing if she got home okay. And it wasn't there, it had been deleted. So then when she went out that day, I did the next thing I could never have imagined myself doing before. I logged onto her computer and logged onto Facebook. And I found this long conversation with a guy I'd never heard of before. And I did something else I'd never done before. I pretended to be her for an hour. And I asked him things like, what's the best thing you've ever done? And he said, making you moan last night. And I don't know if you guys have ever been through this before, but there's this instant sick feeling in your stomach and then suddenly, this whole life that you have pictured ahead of you, it just disappears like that. I decided to try and be as empathetic as possible and try and see if we could work this out. I wanted to understand it from her point of view. What I ended up doing was then blaming myself for it and thinking I had let the relationship get to this point. A year later, we eventually broke up, but by this point, I was in a pretty bad place and I was blaming myself for this. Then there were two things that fundamentally changed on the Marketing Academy for me. The first, so one of the things that I do is I fill in a daily journal, a gratitude journal every day. And this was what the situation was at the time. I had to say three things I was grateful for. I couldn't really think of anything. All I could say about making stay great was being happy again. And my daily affirmation was I just kept telling myself I was gonna overcome this. So the two things that happened, the first was Sherilyn showed us this model, character and persona. Your character is your true self and you want that to be as big as you possibly can. And your persona is that perception that you, you portray to others. You want that to be as small as possible. And I said, Sherilyn, what about, you know, if you don't like your character? What if you're creating this persona to try and be a better person? I gave her an example that I thought I wasn't a particularly sympathetic person. And she said, you are, but you're just focusing on the times that you're not. And so it made me realize, I created this model for myself that I call 10% broken, which is that as humans, we're all a little bit broken in some kind of way. But what we have a tendency to do is focus on that small broken part. And what I needed to do was shift my focus onto the 90% that I did actually like. The second thing that happened was we watched a talk by this amazing lady called um, uh, Sarah Warby, the ex-CMO of Sainsbury's. 
And she said this very simple model, which was to be an amazing leader, you just have to know yourself, love yourself, and be yourself every day. What I liked about the simplicity of this was this gave me my perfect framework. This is the order I needed to do it in. So first I went through and tried to figure out how, to, how do I get to know myself. So the first thing I did was I uh, did all sorts of exercises to look at what, what are my values, my purpose, my mission. I started trying to understand what kind of person I wanted to be. So I looked at people that I admired and tried to understand what were the attributes that I admired about them. And because I'm a marketing geek, I even went as far as actually creating a brand guidelines for myself, which covered not just my vision and mission and so on, but even things like what to wear. I then, once I knew myself, the harder bit was then figuring out, OK, how do I actually start to love myself? So I needed to shift my focus onto the 90%. So one of the first things I did was a daily gratitude journal where I would write three things every day that I actually liked about myself, which was very difficult at first, but it became easier over time. I also got into mindfulness and meditation. Not this time, but I've now also got really into yoga as well. Cannot recommend uh, it enough. I also cut out as much shit as possible. So I just didn't need things like social media in my life. And controversially, I stopped reading the news altogether as well. This gave me a lot more time to actually spend quality time with the likes of my friends. It meant that I could actually start focusing on other people and helping them as much as possible. I tried things like therapy. And I also did a lot of sleep research because I ended up developing insomnia through this whole process. So then once I loved myself, I needed to figure out how, did, how could I do this on a daily basis. So I started looking into how you form habits. Now the problem with habits usually, or habit forming, is that usually what we do is we try and tackle too much at once. So I developed this framework for myself that I call Just One, which is where I looked at everything in my life that I wanted to improve on and say what is the smallest possible thing I could do with that. So for example, uh, with exercise, I said, right, what I'm going to do is one press up every day. And people laughed at this and thought, well, what difference is that going to make? But my point with it was that 365 press ups a year is a lot better than none. And the reality is the hardest thing is getting down there. But once you're down there, you might as well do another 19. So I did this for everything. I'd read one page of a book a day. I'd do one press up a day. I'd eat one healthy meal a day. I'd do one minute of meditation a day. I also completely ripped up my whole calendar and I'd do things like I stopped going to networking events and stuff every single evening and I'd make sure that there was always a minimum of two evenings uh, a week where I could actually spend that by myself or spend it with my friends. I would prepare as much as possible. It sounds simple, but just buying loads of healthy food and so on so that uh, I couldn't be eating so much crap all the time. And I also completely threw out my entire wardrobe and I kid you not, it's now literally, uh, I have a pile of plain black t-shirts and a pile of plain white t-shirts. I have two shirts, this is the most colorful thing I have. And it's great because everything goes with everything. So now by this point, I felt like, okay, cool. I was in a really good place. I knew myself, I loved myself and I was doing this every day. And then 2018 happened, my year from hell. So they say that you have three vectors in your life. Work, relationship, and home. So work, um, I, so I run a, a tech company called Peg. Essentially, we build influencer marketing uh, software for brands. And it all was going well. We had uh, got over 1,700 brands across 169 countries to sign up. We had just raised a bunch of investment. We were growing. It was all very exciting. And then the Cambridge Analytica scandal happened. And Facebook's response to that was they cut the API, the data API, from Facebook and Instagram. So suddenly, we had a tool that no one would buy. At the worst point, we had two weeks of money to find half a million quid, or the company was bust. The level of pressure that puts on you, I can't really describe. At home, luckily, in, uh, in my relationship, I had a new amazing relationship. Uh, a girl that I'd been in love with from about seven years before, she was this kind of the one who always got away. She'd been living in Abu Dhabi. I found out that she was coming back to London, arranged with her mum to meet her at the airport, surprise her, we kissed. Four days later, we went to Thailand for, for two and a half weeks. The day we got back, we moved in together. And the whole thing was like this crazy whirlwind, and it was stupidly perfect. And then one day I got home, she was crying on the sofa. She sat me down and said, I didn't stay at my friend's last night. I stayed at my ex's, and she too cheated on me. Then also, my, in my home life, um, my best friend in the world, Nina, who means more to me than, than anything, she has been my absolute rock through all this, but she suddenly experienced out of the blue something incredibly traumatic. And myself and her boyfriend and another friend had set up a 24 seven suicide watch for her. So everywhere I turned was like a nightmare and the only escape I had was sleep. 
except my insomnia had got so bad by this point, I was taking sleeping pills and still only getting an hour a night. To make all of this worse, the stress on my body made me develop piles, so I had a really fucking itchy asshole as well. <laughs> and like, in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't really matter, but I was like, come on, give me a break. <laughs> oh, sorry, I just went, went back one. But the reason, sorry, I just gotta skip through again. The reason that I tell this is because despite it being my year from hell, is actually my proudest year. So Peg, we managed to figure out a new strategy. No one had cracked how to measure the ROI of influence marketing. So we built a new tool, we released it, it's completely turned the company around and it still is going strong today. In my relationship, we broke up, but I decided I wasn't gonna be bitter and resentful and angry and hateful. I was going to actually instead just do it very amicably. We broke up, I wrote her a long letter and I explained to her that I didn't want her to hate herself for this. I don't blame her. She was going through a difficult time as well. And I said, you will make someone unbelievably happy one day and they will make you. I'm just so, so sorry that couldn't be me. I love you. And then with Nina, amazingly due to the support of her friends around her and her own incredible strength, she managed to pull through the whole situation. It's now amazing. And I reached out to my whole network of friends to say, you know, can we please somehow come together and scrape together some money to give her a nice experience? And amazingly, through the generosity of others, we managed to pay for an all expenses uh, spa weekend uh, away for her with some friends. And it was the first time I'd seen her smile in months, which was just the most unbelievable feeling. So then when I look back to my letter, whilst it was the year from hell, I can look at this and genuinely say, you know what, I did make people happy. I did inspire them. I comforted, I guided, I made people laugh. I did mature. I was the kind of boyfriend a partner could be proud of. I hopefully wasn't a father that I'm aware of. <laughs> um, never know. Um, and most of all, I was proud. And um, now when I look back at my journal from this time, what I noticed really interestingly, and this wasn't intentional, that there were so many points throughout it where actually it was talking about other people rather than myself. So I was saying that I was grateful for having such great co-founders, an amazing support group with the Marketing Academy. Um, I wanted to make other people's days better, Emmy being an amazing rock, making Georgie have a great day, texting Ollie, having a great time with Tash. And what I realized was thinking back to this leadership thing was that even though I was going through my own internal hell, because I knew who I was, I loved myself, and I was myself every day, I was strong enough to actually start focusing on others and helping them as well. So what I want you to do to wrap up is I'd just like you all to get your phone out for a second, and lock it, and then I'd like you to open your photos app and hand it to the stranger next to you. <laughs> nah, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> The, re the reason I like doing that is you can always see the dodgy buggers in this room. This guy, his face, he was, he was shitting it. No what, I, no, what I'd actually like you to do is go to, your, go to your calendar app, go to Sunday, this Sunday, and I want you to create a new reminder or, or event. And I just want you to write this. So oxygen mask, know yourself, love yourself, be yourself every day. And the reason I want you to do this is, you know, maybe, maybe you already do this, maybe, maybe you're fine. But if you even take just five, 10 minutes and actually consider, do you do this? Do you feel like you know this already? Then again, like on a plane, in case of an emergency, you can put on your own oxygen mask and that will be the best way that you can help others as well. Thank you very much.